Hey guys, welcome back to Essentials of Emergency Nursing Care. My name is Frank Schaller and I'm your course faculty for this course. Just wanted to say it was really cool meeting everybody virtually through the discussion. It looks like we have a pretty wide variety of students in the classroom. We have a lot of folks who work in local community emergency departments. We have other folks with no emergency nursing background. However, they have interest. I just wanted to, again, welcome you all to this course, and I hope that you find it helpful. A couple things moving forward for the course. For this week's discussion, if you guys wouldn't mind after the reading, I'd like you guys to share what you do yourself for self-care. I know there may be some of you who would say, absolutely nothing. I just give, give, give. I'm completely selfless. But take a moment and just share with the class what you do for self-care. And then something else I wanted to do this week, I wanted to do a case study with you guys. I think that would be a little bit more interactive than just writing a bunch of words on a discussion post and having you guys respond. So do me a favor and listen to the following case study. Follow along, grab a pen, grab some paper. This way you'll be able to respond to the questions this week for this week's post. So Here's what we have. So you're working in a emergency department, you're working in triage, and you get this type of report from EMS and one of your colleagues. So you have a 57 year old male bus driver coming to the emergency department for a 20 minute episode of diaphoresis and chest pain. He describes the chest pain as central, it's radiating to his left arm and it's crushing in nature. The pain settled pretty promptly after getting a few doses of aspirin, also a tablet of sublingual nitroglycerin. These medications were given by paramedics in the community. And a little more information on this patient. He smoked 20 cigarettes daily since he was a teenager, but really wasn't aware of any other cardiovascular risk factors. You examine the patient and he appeared comfortable. He's able to complete sentences fully. You're not too concerned. You auscultate the heart. There's no heart murmurs appreciated. And you see current vital signs. Blood pressure is 180 over 105. Heart rate's 83 beats per minute. And notice that the heart rate seems regular. Oxygen saturation is 97% on room air. So, after all of this information, what are we thinking is the most likely diagnosis here? Are we looking at acute coronary syndrome? Are we looking at a patient with an aortic dissection, maybe an esophageal rupture, a peptic ulceration, maybe a pneumothorax? What are your guys' thoughts here? Take a moment, pause the video, and write down what you think the most likely diagnosis is at this moment. After resuming the video, you get an EKG on your patient because you're concerned that maybe the etiology of this patient's pain is something cardiac in nature. And this is your EKG. And I'm sorry if it's not phenomenal quality, but you should be able to get an idea here of maybe what's going on. So there's your EKG. And at this moment in time, how would you manage the patient? What kind of things are you thinking as an emergency nurse in terms of any medications that might be administered, any type of monitoring you want to do for the patient? What type of nursing interventions are you anticipating this patient will need? Go ahead and pause the video and write down what you think the answer is to that. All right, so let's get back to the case here. So 30 minutes go by and the patient's chest pain, it's returning, it's greater in intensity while he's hanging out there in the emergency department after your initial nursing interventions. And he's describing his pain as though an elephant is sitting on his chest. So you've already done an EKG again after getting this new information and this is what you see. There we go, not too crooked. So this is your new EKG. 
after your patient has been hanging out for a little while and he's saying that his pain is increasing in intensity. Again, feels like an elephant is sitting on his chest. What kind of things do you anticipate happening now after this new information? Do you look at this EKG and say, oh, you know, I'm just going to keep monitoring him. We'll wait for new orders. Are you thinking maybe he's going to get some IV morphine? Is he going to get a nitroglycerin tablet? Uh, maybe you're going to think this guy's going to the cath lab. I mean, it looks like this guy's having a, a heart attack. That could also be maybe a response to your question. Maybe this guy's going to get a clot busting medication like TPA. What are your thoughts? Pause the video for a moment and go ahead and write down what you think is going to happen next after seeing that EKG. All right, so now getting back to the case. So after seeing that EKG, we see that the patient actually went to the cath lab. And he went because we could see a lot of ST elevation and multiple leads on that EKG. Pretty obvious to see there. And uh, he was found to have a left anterior descending coronary artery completely blocked, completely occluded. And luckily for this gentleman, he had successful percutaneous intervention. He also had a drug eluding stent placed and now has normal flow in the left anterior descending. So, gentleman is getting ready for discharge. He, you have paperwork from the providers taking care of him. Last question for this week's discussion. What do you anticipate the patient will need at this point? You're, you have the discharge paperwork. You're walking into the patient's room. What next? What is the patient going to need from you as the emergency department nurse? What do you anticipate he needs now and in the very near future? Go ahead and respond to that question now. Thank you guys for participating in this week's discussion. I hope you found it helpful, a little bit more interactive since we could do a video case study and we will talk more in the very near future. Take care.